All right, today's date is 3-15-21. And you actually learned in sixth grade, unit rate in sixth grade. I get to take that to like level 100 starting today. In seventh grade, we don't usually call it unit rate. We call it proportional relationships. Proportional relationships, okay? So I'm asking you to copy this down. Please try to focus as much of your attention to me. Today would be not, today would be not the day to like completely tune me out. Today would be the day to, um, you know, stay focused on me, okay? Now, hold, I gotta, hold on one second, one second. Let me put this pause. We're back. Okay, so here we go. The cost of three bags of chips is four dollars and twenty cents what is the cost of one bag all right copy this down so this is our title first problem the cost of three bags of chips is four dollars and twenty cents what is the cost of one bag one bag Okay, so the cost of three bags of chips is four dollars and twenty cents. What is the cost of one bag? Okay, so the first thing you have to do is to divide. The first thing you have to do is divide, okay? Um, we're going to divide $4.20 divided by three, okay? Now, You can use a calculator to do this problem. Good, Abraham, very good. Thank you for, for, do, for putting your answer in your chat box. I really appreciate that. Okay, if you use a calculator, you plug in the number inside first, inside, so 420, then divided by the number outside. If you do it backwards, you'll get a wrong answer. So again, type the first number, I mean the bottom, inside number, inside number, divided by the outside number, and we get 140. Good. So if I were to do it by hand, carry the decimal one, remainder one, bring down the two, three goes into 12, four times, that gives me 12, zero, zero, bring down the zero, zero. Okay, so that's our answer. What is our answer? Well, let me read the question. What is the cost of one bag? Oh, so one bag is $1.40. In sixth grade, we call that the unit rate. So step number two, the unit rate but in seventh grade, we, we're fancy in seventh grade. In seventh grade, we call it the constant of proportionality. Okay, this is probably brand new vocabulary for you. Constant of proportionality, that's just a super fancy, fancy way of saying unit rate. What does that mean? It's whatever your answer is. So a dollar forty per bag. That's what our unit rate is. That's what our constant of proportionality equals to a dollar forty. So when I yes, when they ask you if you say um, what's the constant of pro proportionality, it would be one dollar forty. Exactly. So it's a hard way, super complicated way 
of asking you unit rate, asking you what's the cost of one bag. So the question might be exactly what you said. What's the constant of proportionality? You're sitting there going like, what? Oh, who? But hopefully by the end of today, you'll realize like, oh, constant of proportionality. That just means a one of one cost of the bag, one hour. Okay, we're good. It's not hard. It just sounds hard. No doubt about it. Okay. In sixth grade, they call it unit rate. In seventh grade, we call it the constant of proportionality. They both mean the same thing. All right. So that's the second thing we have to do. First thing is to divide. Second thing is to, our answer is basically called constant of proportionality. Now, the third thing we have to do today is we have to create a table. And so we're going to draw a table that looks like this. where your top number represents the X and your bottom number represents your Y. Sometimes the tables are written horizontal like we just did, and sometimes they're written vertical like this, okay? For the first couple of problems and days of doing this, we'll be doing a horizontal table, and then later on we'll switch over to vertical table. They're exactly the same. All right, now, this is the number one thing kids get wrong. What I've noticed throughout my whole day, this is the number one thing kids would get stuck on, okay? And when you're working in groups, this is the number one thing we're gonna be checking. Your X, it stands for something. It means something from your word problem. So our word problem deals with two numbers which stand for something. The three stands for bags, and the four stands for money, right? So the two things that you're talking about are bags and money. So we have to label your X and your Y bags and or money, right? So one of them's bags, one of them's money. If you label them incorrectly, everything else is wrong. It's very important that you know how to label them. And this is how you label them. It's going to sound kind of weird at the beginning. And hopefully it makes sense towards the end of the period. When it comes to your X, your X I like to refer to it as the one of something. The one of something. I call it something because each problem is something different. In this problem, one of, what are we solving for one of? One of what? What are we solving for in this problem? One what? Is it one dollar or one bag? What are we solving for in this problem? Bags. One bag, right? Whoops, that's an A. So one of something, when I say, well, what are you solving for? One of what? One of something. What's that something? Well, in this question, it says one bag. So therefore, your X is that. What are you solving for? One of what? Oh, I'm solving for one bag. So therefore, your X is labeled bags. Bag, bags, whatever. Okay? There, and then your Y is the other the other thing you were talking about well the other thing i was talking about was money right how can you tell what you're talking about look for the numbers wherever the numbers are that's what you're talking about so three bags four dollars and twenty cents so money so therefore my why is my money okay when i check your work with your picture of your classwork i'll be checking did you label these correctly because if you don't label these correctly, this is no bueno, okay? So you gotta label it correct, correctly. Your X is what you're finding one of something. Here I was finding one bag, so I put bags up here. And then whatever else I was talking about money, that goes on the bottom. All right. If you are creating the table, like we are right now, do yourself a favor and always label it zero, one, two, three, four, okay? I, first four, first five. Do yourself a favor. Just if you get to put the numbers in the top on your X, always use zero, one, two, three, four. Do yourself a favor. Use those numbers. Trust me. All right. Now I'm going to ask you the hardest question of the day. Are you guys ready for the hardest question? If I bought zero bags, I bought zero bags of chips. How much did I spend on zero bags of chips? Zero. Zero. Yep, good. What if I buy one bag of chips? 
How much is $1. blue $1. on? What, what was that? $1.40. Yeah, $1.40. Whatever your answer is to this problem, to this division, will always go <clears throat> underneath the one. Okay, whatever your answer is, underneath the one. Okay. What about two? What if I buy two bags? It'll be 280, right? Wait, how did she get 280? What? What we just did right now is we just added a dollar forty. You add your unit rate. You add your constant and proportionality. All right. What if I buy three bags of chips? How much is three bags of chips gonna cost me? Four four point twenty. Four dollars twenty cents. Yeah. Four dollars and twenty cents. And to tell you the truth, three bags is what they told me. Three bags is four twenty, right? So the information was already up there. All right, step number four. I mean, not four, uh, four bags. How much is four bags gonna cost me? Five, six, five dollars and sixty cents. Good. You can go on the side and add, right? All you're doing is you just keep adding a dollar forty, a dollar forty. That's why it's important for us to make sure that we get the correct constant of proportionality. Because that's a number you just keep adding, adding, adding. Okay? Now I know this seems like a lot. A lot of stuff had just happened right now, right? And uh, I don't expect you to be like a master at this, like this very, very second, okay? But we are going to work together Mr. on Millie, it. Mr. I have a question. Yes. Um, is it like a whole number, like 50, 60, 70, 80, as like since? Do we have to write the zero after in our group work, or do, can we just write like 4.7, 4.2? That, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You don't have to. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something a little different with your notes. I'm not done with this problem. I am done with this problem for today. I still have to teach you, like, a whole bunch of more stuff with this problem. So what I'm going to ask you to do, I'm going to ask you to do is I'm gonna ask you to leave some space before you start the next problem. We still have to write equations, we still have to graph them, we still have to answer a couple more questions. So leave like a good space, maybe like a, a whole hand, horizontal hand space. So I have to turn the page and I'm gonna leave like a whole hand space before I start problem number two. So skip a chunk, leave it blank, um, because you're going to go back to this either on Wednesday or Thursday and add to it. And if you lose these notes, you're going to have to copy everything down again. So don't. So just leave some space and start this problem with some space. The cost of five cereal boxes is $10. What is the cost of one box. So I left some room up top so I can finish the problem, my first problem later. I started the second problem here. The cost of five cereal boxes is $10. What is the cost of one box? Now, the math on this problem is super easy. I'm pretty sure most of you have your answer, right? I did this on purpose so I can show you a couple of like um, secret, important, not so secretive tips. All right, so your first step is when we divide, right? A lot of times kids, um, kids are just like, well, what number goes inside? What number goes outside? Well, you'll always have X outside and Y inside. And you're like, well, that doesn't help me. Well, it should help knowing that your X is the one of something. So what's the one of something I'm trying to solve for? What is What am I solving for one of? Am I solving for one box or am I solving for one dollar? What am I solving for one of? One box. One box. So therefore, X is actually standing for box. X is your box. So therefore, Y will be your money. It's your other one. But, Miss Melly, if they say, what is the, um, 
Is it say something about money? Like, are you talking about money? Is it going to be money on top and then boxes on the bottom? Yeah, because if you write it the other way, it would be Y on top, X on the bottom. So it would be money divided by boxes. And then if I plug in the numbers, 10 would be inside because 10 is my money. And five goes outside because five represents my boxes because it says five boxes, $10. And so uh, 10 divided by five is two. And because that gives me 10, right? So in seventh grade, we say that the constant of proportionality equals $2.00 per box. So my unit rate, my constant of proportionality is two. My unit rate is two. Each box costs two dollars. Okay. It just sounds really complicated, but all you're doing is dividing and finding the cost of one. One box. Okay. I'm going to turn the page, but I want to make sure you have this down. Screenshot. All right. Do my table now. I don't want to squeeze it in here, so I'm just going to turn the page. So, it's my table. X goes on top, Y goes on the bottom. Zero, one, two, three, four. If the numbers are not filled out, fill it out as zero through four. Trust me. Always start with zero. One, two, three, four. That's how we do it in seventh grade. In eighth grade and beyond, the numbers change, but hey, stick with me, zero through four here. All right, X represents the one of something. So what were we solving one of? One box or one dollar? One box or one dollar? What does X represent? One box. One box, so we're gonna label that box. And the other thing we were talking about was money or cost. So we label that. This is. The number one thing we're going to be checking when we're in groups, it's like, did you label the X and Y correctly? Because if you don't, even though these numbers might be right, if you don't have it labeled correctly, you're actually telling me the opposite. All right. So hardest question of the day. If I have zero, if I buy, no, yeah, if I buy zero boxes, how much is zero boxes going to cost me? Zero boxes. Zero boxes is... Zero dollars, right? Money. Zero. Yeah. What about one box? One two dollars cost two dollars. Two boxes. Four dollars. Three boxes. Six dollars. Four boxes. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Right? What do we label it with the dollar sign or no? Um no, it's fine. What are we doing here? We're adding two dollars each time, right? Why are we adding $2 each time? Because that's our constant of proportionality. That number, that two, is what we keep adding each time. And sometimes you, um, some of you are thinking about it as multiplying. If I multiply four times two, I get eight. If I multiply three times two, I get six. If I multiply two times four, two times two, I get four. So there's a lot of different ways that we're using the two. The constant of proportionality. All right, we're done with this problem for today. Um, skip, 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 skip a good chunk. We're gonna start the next problem, okay? Skip, start the next problem. Screenshot it, don't say. All right, okay. I can make 30 cupcakes in five minutes. You know what? It's not make, I think it's decorate. I can decorate 30 cupcakes in five minutes. I'm super fast. How many can I make per minute? I can make 30 cupcakes in five minutes. How many can I make per minute? Okay. 
So, first thing you have to do is divide. Which number goes inside the division box? Which number goes outside? You have 30 cupcakes. So we have cupcakes, 30 cupcakes, five minutes. So we have time and cupcakes per minute. Does anybody know what per stands for in math? Per? I'm like every minute. Yeah, so per one. means one minute. Like per in math means one. Per means one. So when it says per minute, you're talking about one minute. They just complicate it. You know math. It's complicated. Okay, so I'm solving for one minute. So that means that minutes go outside. So five minutes. Minutes goes outside. So therefore, that's my X. Uh, 30 cupcakes goes inside. So that means that cupcakes is going to be my Y. So whatever number goes inside is your Y. Whatever goes outside is your X. Why does this one go outside? Because we're solving for one up. Whatever you're finding one of, you put outside. I'm finding one minute, so that one goes outside. All right, so now let's divide. Let's divide. Thirty divided by five is six. That gives you thirty zero. So my constant of proportionality. equals six cup cakes per minute. I can decorate six cupcakes per minute. I'm super fast. Well, you can make you can make thirty cupcakes in a minute. Do we All have right. to write this constant of proportionality as six cupcakes? Yeah. Everything I write, you write. Did you see how I underlined it per? Did you see how I wrote one, two, three, four? You see how I underlined it four times? No, like in group work, like do we have to write cost of proportionality equals six cupcakes per minute? Because uh, that's just a lot of I think I wrote it as unit rate, actually. On your in your uh, slides. I labeled it unit rate. I wasn't sure if you guys can handle constant proportionality. It sounds like you can't. Oh, yes, we can. You can't. Um, the reason we write it over and over again is just so when you read it, like on a test and you read constant and proportionality, you're not scared of it. It doesn't cause any fear. If I were to give you a test question and not introduce to you constant and proportionality, you're going to read this and be like, oh, I don't know what to do. And you walk away from it. You're like, oh, it's too hard. Let me skip it. When in reality, constant and proportionality is super easy, but the way it, the, the words just seem really hard. But if you stay with me the next couple of days, you'll get comfortable with it. And hence, we're writing it over and over again. But you get comfortable with it. All right, let's do a table. I'm pretty sure the first time you saw this table 10 minutes ago, you were like, oh my God, what is that table? And now you realize like, okay, it's not terrible. X and Y. And if you're gonna fill in the numbers, always fill it in zero, one, two, three, four. This is how it's gonna kind of look like on your slides. And here in this first box where it says X, I want you to label it. Like, what does X stand for? What does minute. X stand for? Oh, sorry, minute. 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 What does Y stand for? Cupcakes. Cupcakes. To me, this is the hardest part to me. Labeling the what it uh, what does each variable stand for? To me, that's the hardest part. Like, what does X stand for? What does Y stand for? Um, it's the hardest part. It's the part that kids mess up on. They can divide, and they can even do this part, right? Like, label it correctly. But then when it comes to this, they do the opposite. And it's like, Ooh. All right. If I have zero minutes, I have no time. How many cupcakes am I going to decorate in zero minutes? Zero. 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 Good. Thank you. What about one minute? I got one minute. How many cupcakes can I do in one minute? Six. Six. This answer goes right there. What if I give you two minutes? How many can I do in two minutes? Twelve. Twelve? Three minutes? Eighteen. 
four minutes? 24. 24. And how did we get those numbers? All we did was add by six. Or you could have thought about it this way as well, times six. So four times six is 24. Three times six is 18. Two times six is 12. However your brain wants to think about it. If they want to think about multiplication, cool, you're going to go this way. If you're like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good with adding. Fantastic. Just keep adding 666 all the way across. Woo. All right. Now, I'm not done with this problem. We're going to come back to it either Wednesday or Thursday. So I'm going to leave some space here so I can take more notes down. So each problem we did today, I left some space. So this was the first problem we did. So then I left some space here. This is the second problem we did. I left some space. This is the last problem we did today and I left some space. So make sure you also leave space uh, before you start your classwork, right? All right.